The Spirit of God. Sometimes it's portrayed as a gentle dove, sometimes as a wild goose, and sometimes as a flowing river. But it is always the energy of God, alive and at large in the world and for the world. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Hi, my name is Ed Horstman and welcome to the online service of worship from Round Hill Community Church in Greenwich, Connecticut. We are delighted that you have joined us for this online experience of worship and we look forward to staying connected with you in this way. Today is Celebration Sunday at Round Hill Community Church and we gather to celebrate those ways in which the Spirit has been active in and through our community during these past months. And this is also a time to mark the beginning of our faith formation programs for the autumn. Please visit our church website, roundhillcommunitychurch.org, for more information about upcoming programs that can help all of us to enhance our learning and our fellowship and our service. Today marks the 21st anniversary of the terrorist attacks that took place on September 11, 2001. We continue to keep in our prayers all those who were affected by those acts of violence, and we remember all those who lost their lives as a result of those attacks. Let us join together in a time of remembrance. Amen. At Round Hill Community Church, we seek to be a force for good, and we give thanks for the many ways in which God is calling us to fulfill that purpose. Through our financial offerings during our in-person service over the last three weeks, we collected $2,500 to purchase Target gift cards for Ukrainian refugee families who've begun to settle in our region and who need support as they make our country their new home. Many thanks to those who contributed to that effort and we will let you know as other opportunities present themselves to support these families in the future. And last, but definitely not least, we welcome back Leslie Smith Kahn's, our Director of Music and Digital Media. Welcome back, Leslie. Leslie has just returned from maternity leave and we are so happy to have her back in our midst. Many blessings to her and Gus and their daughter, Mary. And now let us join together with people of faith and hope and love all across the world and worship God. Let us pray. God of all trust, May we who confess your faith prove it in our lives with abundant joy, outrageous hope, and dependence on nothing but your word alone. Through Jesus Christ, amen. And let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hi there, boys and girls. How are you? How are you enjoying the beginning of the school year? I hope you've all had a great first couple of days upon returning to your schools. And I just wanted to take a moment today to tell you about something special that will be going on in church school this year. This isn't about a sermon and it's not about any, any particular character in the Bible. But in general, I just wanted to share with you something that we've already shared with some of your families and parents. 
we are going to be kicking off a new curriculum in church school this year. Now, what's a curriculum? Well, a curriculum is basically a plan of study. It gives us guidelines and instructions on things that we want to cover with you in church school this year. Now, of course, we'll be learning a lot about the Bible and we'll be learning about some of the most important special characters in the Bible, some of the stories that influence them, but also influence our lives today. We'll be doing, of course, some wonderful crafts and fun activities, games, but what we're going to be basing all of that on are what are called values. What's a value? Well, a value is what describes a way we want to live, something that we find to be important and something that we want to cherish and bring to the front of our lives. So for example, some of the values we'll be covering this year are things like love, trust, obedience, being brave, being um, honest. And these are some of the values that our church values. Our church finds these particular characteristics to be important. So we wanna share them with you and we want to explore those concepts so that someday when we're ready to go to confirmation and acknowledge that we are truly members of this church, we will know and come to love the values that make this church so very special. So we look forward to welcoming you to our very first children's ministry meeting, which will be next Sunday, September 17th, oh, September 18th. During our worship service, we will start off in the sanctuary all together. And then Miss Lizzie and I will gladly take the children back to our classrooms. And I just wanna tell you, we are so excited to be having you come back and joining us. We are looking forward to exploring these wonderful values with you this year and trying to find a way that we can all model our life on the life of Jesus, who was the greatest example of love that this world has ever seen. So come join us, bring your friends, because of course, the more the merrier, and we will look forward to seeing you next Sunday, September 18th, for our very first official church school meeting of the new season. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls. And remember, Jesus loves you, and so do we. But what do you believe? Have you ever had a conversation with someone about a topic that's especially important and perhaps ideas are going back and forth and finally someone looks at you and says, hey, but what do you believe? In today's service of worship for Celebration Sunday, I wanna share with you one of my beliefs. I think it's the one belief that most activates and energizes the work that I try to do in the world with you 
as a Christian congregation and for the wider world. So first of all, a selection of scripture lessons. The first comes from the book of Genesis, chapter one, verses one through three. So these are the first three verses in the Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. This next passage comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. This describes the experience of Jesus preaching in his hometown, in his hometown synagogue. You might say this was the first sermon he ever delivered. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Chapter 20, verses 19 through 22. This describes an encounter that the disciples had with the risen Jesus after his resurrection. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. These are the words of Paul who was a founder of many of the early congregations scattered around the Mediterranean world. And this is what he said to these, this little congregation in Corinth. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. In the name of God, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I had an opportunity to do something two weeks ago that I'd never done before, which is to make a visit to the US Open Tennis Tournament. It was a fantastic experience. And I went on Tuesday of the first week and had a grounds pass, so I was able to walk all around uh, the tennis center and see all kinds of players playing. And for a little while, I settled in uh, to watch one Dutch player who was especially good. And I sat on this very tiny uh, set of bleachers right next to the court. And I was next to two men from the Netherlands who were his coaches. And then we were soon joined by a man who sat directly behind us. And I think we could sense fairly early on that this was a rather colorful character. And uh, this man was talking uh, openly to anyone around him who would listen. Uh, he was even talking to the players on the court. He was talking to himself. And uh, to be honest, it was rather entertaining. You know, no one was ever going to have to worry about getting the silent treatment from this man. That is for sure. And uh, at one point, a ball, a tennis ball, came over the fence from the court where two players were playing. And it rolled right underneath the bleachers where we were sitting. And, uh, it wasn't really that hard to get to, but the man behind me, uh, who'd been doing all of this talking, scrambled away from his seat, got down in there and grabbed that ball and brought it back up like a prized possession. And someone turned around and said to him, hey, you know, you should throw that ball back on the court. And he said, without hesitation, I'm from Long Island and I am not returning this ball. I am keeping this tennis ball. Now, apparently, there's something about being connected with Long Island that gave this man a special sense of strength and vigor, also a very high degree of possessiveness related to the tennis balls. Um, but it was just this beautiful moment where 
his connection with Long Island and his possession, his eagerness to possess this tennis ball came together in a beautiful way and all of us got to uh, witness it. Now, we may not have, many of us, a strong connection to Long Island. However, we may have a strong connection to the sanctuary of Round Hill Community Church, even if you have been participating in these online services of worship for the past two plus years, mostly from your home, or if you've been joining us from wherever you happen to be, chances are that you have noticed that we are in this sanctuary, and that has maybe even been very important to you. In fact, when we started to record our online services more than two and a half years ago, if you can believe that, so many of you responded to us by saying, thank you for these services, but could you please record them in the sanctuary? Because early on, we recorded online messages from my office in the church building, from my driveway, from outdoors in other parts of the church campus, but many people who watched those services encouraged us to come back into the sanctuary. And lo and behold, two and a half years ago, we're still here. Now at the heart of this sanctuary is a book. And actually you can see the book behind me. This book is actually a library. And this library contains 66 books written over hundreds of years by several dozen authors, most of whom did not know one another, and we call it the Bible. But in fact, it's really our community storybook. And week in and week out, we open that book, and we listen to the stories, and we dive into them like deep sea divers looking for treasure that we can bring back with us to the surface and say, hey, look what we found. Now, running through this library, there's a thread. Now, sometimes that thread runs right along the surface, and you can't miss it. And it's also true that for long stretches, it's invisible. It runs deep down in the stories. You have to trust that it's there because you can't always see it on the surface. This thread is made up of stories about the Spirit of God. It's the spirit of God thread. That's what I would call it. And it begins all the way back at the very beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis. In the first three verses, there's the spirit. In Hebrew, it's called the ruach of God, the wind or the breath or the spirit of God. And then this energizing, animating, activating force is described over and over again all throughout the Bible by so many different authors and by so many different ways. These stories and many, many more all throughout the text tell us about how this spirit works in the world through people, with people, what forms it takes. And in fact, throughout history, many artists have tried to give some expression to the spirit. Sometimes it's portrayed as a gentle dove, sometimes as a wild goose, sometimes, sometimes as flowing water. Now, if I had to summarize my faith in a few short words, and I bet some of you are smiling inwardly and thinking, Ed, you couldn't summarize anything in a few short words. Well, here's what I would say. I'm going to shock you because here's my five-word statement of faith. I believe in the Spirit. I believe it's mysterious. It's invisible. It's free. It's wild. It's caring. It loves all things and all places. It's galvanizing. And one writer of the New Testament said, it's the best advocate we'll ever have. It is as close to us as the beating of our hearts and the breath that flows in and out of our bodies. Now this morning, I read some stories about the Spirit of God. There was the one from the book of Genesis. The Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters at the time of creation as if observing, watching, thinking, waiting. 
And then fast forward to the time of Jesus when he was addressing his hometown synagogue. He stood up before those people. What would he say for the first time? He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to bring good news to the poor. And then after the death of Jesus, there's that story about his appearance to the disciples. They're scared out of their wits. They thought his fate would become their fate. They didn't want that to happen, so they'd lock themselves up. What happened? Jesus apparently walked right through a wall, came into their midst, said, peace be with you. But the first thing he did to them was to breathe his breath into them, his spirit into their lives. And then the last reading comes from a man known only to us as Paul, who helped to gather small groups of Christians around the Mediterranean world. Those groups eventually became fellowships, early churches. And his word of encouragement to them was to say, each and every one of you has been touched by this spirit and given some expression of it to use for the common good. So whatever the Spirit might do in their lives to strengthen them, it would also give them strength to do something for someone else. These are just a few stories among so many that I could have shared with you about the Spirit, but they all point to the same thing. The Spirit is the great invisible actor in the drama of faith. Things happen, important things, in the lives of people of faith because of this spirit, things that would not be possible if we were only working under our own steam. And how many times in my life has someone said to me, when reflecting back on some significant project dedicated to the common good for others, you know, I couldn't have done that alone. It was as if I had this added energy they talk about added energy, I would describe that as the spirit. Over and over again, over the years, people have told me of times in their lives when they've been strangely moved to serve or to reach out to others. Sometimes the music in this sanctuary may touch us in an especially profound way, as if there's some other added urging in the music in addition to the notes and the sounds the spirit. Sometimes we might awaken out of a deep sleep in the middle of the night with a certain clarity about something, a clarity we could not have conjured on our own. We might call that a little insomnia. I call it the spirit. Sometimes of communities of faith that have felt deader than a doornail have experienced a resurgence of purpose, a dream, a vision, have not understood where that possibly could have come from. Maybe the spirit. So here's what I'm celebrating on Celebration Sunday, September 11th, 2022. The same spirit that energized the mission and energy of Jesus is still on the loose. It's working with us, for us, in us, and through us. The spirit understands that we may be feeling very uncertain about the future still. We may be wondering what our legacy is going to be. We may be wondering if anyone's going to be added to our numbers as time goes on, but the spirit isn't worried. I've never been able to find a single verse in the Bible or in fact in any sacred writing that described the spirit as being nervous, anxious, approaching the future with trepidation. Instead, the spirit is energizing bold, patient, eager. It's the spirit that's observing, studying, breathing through us, waiting to make the right move at the right time. It won't be rushed. And that spirit has been busy at Round Hill Community Church. There's an energy in our congregation. I feel it, a sense of difference. It's showing itself in a whole variety of ways. You can see it in the quiet acts of caring that create a current from one person to the next and deepen the experience of friendship in our congregation. You can see the spirit at work in this congregation's growing desire to be a greater force for good in the area of environmental justice. You can see it in the 
280 plus solar panels on our buildings, but you can also see it in the new compost station in back of the community house. Maybe, maybe the symbols for Round Hill Community uh, Church in the future will be a solar panel and a decaying tomato. William McCaskill, who is a uh, teacher at the University of Oxford, um, young Scotsman, brilliant young man, has coined the term long-termism as the imperative of moral action that we need to embrace if we are going to care for people not only in our own generation, but those who are in the future yet unborn. He said these are the most disenfranchised people because the quality of their lives is so dependent on our commitment to the well-being of the planet. You can see the spirit at Round Hill Community Church in the coming together of small groups of people who are addressing issues of violence, who are concerned uh, to develop the creation of a whole new values-based curriculum for our church school, which is underway and mostly completed, the resettlement of refugees, all these people are conspiring together. And I use that word conspiring deliberately because it literally means to breathe together. And the spirit is so connected with breath. Here are groups of people who, are, who have entered into a kind of spiritual conspiracy, breathing together for the common good. There's so much to celebrate right now. So much to give us confidence and the good news is that so much of this energy has come from beyond us to go through us and then out into the world. I believe that the spirit is the force of God that can help us to turn towards the future with hope. Because it's not afraid of chaos. It's not afraid of death. The spirit loves life and it wants it for all of us all across the world. It wants for all people to have a full, vital, vibrant experience of life. So one of the best prayers that we can pray is also one of the shortest. Come Holy Spirit. And then our work is to wait with patience to see where this Spirit wants us to go because as we grow accustomed to its movements, and I think we are growing accustomed to its movements, we will be able to sense where the Spirit is stirring in us and where it might want to, to lead us or guide us or direct us. And as Barbara Brown Taylor says in one of her books, one of her sermons actually about the Holy Spirit, once you get the hang of it, the evidence that helps us detect the movement of the Spirit is easier and easier to spot. Whenever two plus two does not equal four, but five, whenever you find yourself speaking with elegance, you know you do not have, or offering forgiveness you had not meant to offer, whenever you find yourself taking risks you thought you did not have the courage to take, or reaching out to someone you had intended to walk away from, you can be pretty sure that you're learning the ways of the Spirit. And more than that, you're taking part in it, breathing in, breathing out, taking God into you and giving God back to the world again with some of you attached. Come Holy Spirit. Let's ask for it. Let's look for it. Let's have fun with the idea that the Spirit is drawing us together to accomplish for God far beyond what any one of us could do alone. And along the journey, let's please enjoy each other's company. Because if the Spirit is an advocate for us, it surely wants to energize us to be advocates for each other. Until as it is in heaven, so may it be on earth. Amen.
Let us pray. We gather today, Creator God, by the prompting of your spirit and your desire for us to worship together on this celebration as a community. Each of us, connected as a family of faith, related by our common bond as your children, bring to worship our own burdens. Hear our prayers of personal concern as well as those of our world, our nation, and our community. In your mercy, God of grace, hear our prayers for our world. We pray for the people of Ukraine, for the end of violence and the use of oppression as a way to control and coerce. We pray for peace and justice to be the rule of the land. We pray for the poor, the refugee, and the asylum seeker. We pray for the hungry, the houseless, and the sick. In a world of such abundance, we pray that all may experience enough. In your mercy, God of peace, hear our prayers for our nation. We remember the pain and the loss of September 11th today. Every anniversary an occasion for prayer, every remembrance a living grief. We pray for the generations affected by this tragedy those who still harbor the trauma of unspeakable violence, those still grieving the lives lost. We pray for the innocents who witnessed the violence humans can perpetrate on one another. Lord, have mercy upon us. Turn us wholeheartedly to your path of peace. Floods continue to decimate homes and lives in our country. Wildfires rage, storms devastate. God, your creation is so powerful and is worthy of our respect. Help us care for our planet as our precious home. Encourage our leaders towards initiatives that are environmentally just. Help us to help those, the poorest among us, who are most affected by our poor stewardship of natural resources. Help us all remember our responsibility to you, to each other, and to our planet. United as a community of faith and as the body of Christ, whether gathered here or online, we lift these prayers up to you, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. We pray that you would continue to use us here at Round Hill Community Church to be your hands and feet and heart in this world as we seek to be your disciples. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer, the Round Hill Community Church prayer. Our Heavenly Father, shed forth thy blessed spirit upon all our lives. Make each one of us an instrument in thy hands for good. Purify our hearts, strengthen our minds and bodies, fill us with Christian love. Let no pride, no self-conceit, no rivalry, no ill will ever spring up among us. Make us earnest and true, wise and prudent, giving no just cause for offense. And may thy holy peace rest upon us this day and every day throughout the coming week, sweetening our trials, cheering us in our work, and keeping us faithful to the end, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth in peace and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you peace so that together we may be empowered by the Spirit of God to be peacemakers now and always.